Thanks for having us. Yeah, just this was unexpected. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Never expected this, but uh, it's amazing. We met up last night at a gathering at Performance Tackle, and one thing led to another, and here we are. Well, you know, I think it's important for people to realize, like, some some history about the game that we all love so much, and especially on the West Coast. You know, uh, as I travel the country, people were surprised that there's even bass fishing out here, and it's like, whoa, man, it goes way back. <laughs> you guys would be surprised. So that's yeah. why we're here, man. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some uh, traditional old school stuff, the way things were, the way things are now, and how they compare and contrast, and how we can uh, continue to get better at this, man. So let's do this. Uh oh, just digging deep, boys and girls. Oh, he's getting fired up. What's he doing now? Oh wow. Don't have a hook on it. That's the Michael. That's the one, huh? That's the Michael back in the day right there. And in fact, uh John Murray did his damage back in, uh, on the West Coast with these uh Michaels back in the day. That was back in the early early 90s. Came, this was introduced in Japan. Murray had this bait. And he took it all and made his sweep around the west coast here and uh, won quite a few boats. Wow. Yeah, this bait here was uh, gold. How it is that money. just not another popper? You know, <clears throat> a kid today might look at that thing and be like, oh, it just looks like anything else I've seen. Well, this bait here, originally the uh, pop bar was the one who started it all. Mm -hmm. And then the pop bar was discontinued. Japan took that idea, refined it as usual and made a superior bait quality durable and had all the right color schemes and the right people were able to get a hold of these this bait was going for a hundred to 150 dollars on the water and what, what year was this going on this was going on in the early 90s that's obscene yeah early 90s and i'm telling you um only a handful of guys had these baits it, i mean murray was the one who had the bait yeah but eventually it branched out and got out and luckily through larry howard phoenix phoenix bait company rod bait company through larry through my sponsor i was able to obtain these baits wow and it didn't take me long to catch on figure what was happening uh. but uh yeah i was i was probably a good year and a half behind two years behind actually after murray was doing his damage and starting to fish these but i didn't know completely the whole deal behind all this you know these guys were literally running and gunning and burning water okay and just firing these out wow and looking for that one key bite they'd get five six seven bites a day but your bites were quality they were the right ones the right bites and you were a winner you know and uh they pulled the right fish i mean i've caught honestly double digit fish on this wow i got some, some man i got some giant, i haven't done man i want to do it i've got some giants 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 in fact um first boat giveaway cast Ake lake that was early 90s and uh we had the fish off uh it was on cast Ake lake that was colorado river division the okay. south, southern division northern division uh for west coast bass and we had top guys you got murray you got guys uh, yellows then he was fishing but he decided to go back east so yellows didn't what didn't come out for some of the tournaments he was already working his way back east but murray stuck around and he fished some of these championship tournaments um steve klein klein's uh, gary klein's brother um we had dobbins we had um russ meyer uh, we had a lot of good sticks back in the day. We got D. Thomas, you got Glebe. Uh, we had all kinds of good fishermen. These were the first generation. A lot of them were first generation pro. I came behind them, so I was like second generation. But um, I fished this bait in November, first uh, first of November. Previously, I fished a team tournament, free fishing for this big fish off they were having at Cast Ake, and I fished by myself a, a tournament, local tournament. And I believe I took like a third place and I fished by myself and I found the potential 
time of year was perfect. Santa Ana's were blowing, fish were up. I had the right areas that I had, and I keyed in on this bait on a third place finish. The following week, I came back and fished a big fish off tournament with some of the best fishermen in the United States, and uh, I actually uh, ended up taking second place. Uh, I lost a tournament by like by a pound and a half. I missed the boat. But what happened is, is that I ran out of water, ran out of fish, and that's what happens with top water fishing. So mm. I took a second place, um, and Mike North actually won fishing in 50, 60 feet of water, jigging spoons. Ah. Here I'm throwing top water, just the opposite. Yeah. And yet I got all these guys that come from the Colorado River, northern guys, everybody's, you know, and I'm trying to keep a low profile, and I got a top water bite going. You know, and I actually uh, capitalized the first day. I had uh, two fish in the five pound range. And that's what set the pace for me. And uh, actually, I'll never forget this. And in fact, this is the bait. That's the best this, part this about is this, the bait. man. And I retired it. I retired the bait. It just, it was just a money bait. This color was just by far, uh, it was so good to me for, for many years. I painted the bottom, gave it a little bit of red on there too. Okay. But overall, um, this bait here was just trem tremendous in uh, some of my tourna pre tournament fishing and early career. Baits with a story, man. That's where it's <clears throat> at. I love it. We're still looking for the 70s, though. <laughs> I, I really, We're stuck in the 90s right now. You know, I, I have them. We're getting warm. Okay. And I have some baits. I want to share that most people would not even recognize. No, they, to be honest with you. I've actually never seen that Michael in person. You the know, Michael, The Michael is a special bait. Um... Oh, I have a lot of lot of Lucky Crafts, the original Lucky Crafts as well. I still have them, and they're gold. Mm. The original, the original, original Lucky Crafts. I got a ton, a, a ton, and I keep saying I still got the Rapalas. Look at that box, big shad wraps, huh? Well, SR9s. This probably? is this is money right here too. I've never even seen that color. No, I made this is mine. This is my version. This is my version right here. This is my version of it, and this was money back then. And in fact, we I'd weight the hoods down with lead 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 weight. I'd, mm, I'd weight them, wrap okay. them, and suspend these. I was suspending these back 30 years ago, 25, 30. Years ago, wow. Suspending these baits before anybody was really doing uh, suspending baits. I learned this from the boys up north and caught on to that and uh, in fact Gary Dobbins was doing pretty much the same thing and this uh, this bait right here has taken me to the top and got some good checks out of that you can't replicate a, a profile of a shad and overall look size and balsa better than this bait and nobody else has it this bait right here is a sleeper and obviously you can't get no more. Nope. Awesome. I'm gonna start a frenzy out there. Uh, yeah, you are. In uh, people looking for baits, searching for these baits now. I thought I had them. So tell me, you've got all the juice baits, man, like from back in the day and everything. How much is it? How much of it is the bait itself, and how much is it? the man behind the bait confidence a lot of confidence is involved experience on the water confidence you know uh and we talk about confidence you know one way i explain it to one of my buddies is uh you know some of these guys that are coming up show more arrogance than confidence and people ask me well what's the difference and the difference is the arrogance comes with no experience and the confidence is earned through experience. Exactly. You're earned. And that's what we did back then. Yeah. <clears throat> you earned it. You know? You, you, you got to, hey, a boxer's got to go out there and take a few lickings. Too. That's right, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. You, you have to be humbled. That's it. You have to be humbled to grow and mature. And the thing about fishing is I look at it the same way. You got to go out there and it's rewarding to earn it and not be handed it. Don't fish somebody else's water. Don't fish their pattern. Learn your own and be be stronger that way, and uh, you 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 will definitely exceed and excel in everything that you do. I honestly think uh, more people need to hear that message these days. You know, everybody's looking for that instant gratification, the shortcut, 
uh, the good stuff doesn't come through, um, you know, those, those avenues. That's true. That is so true. Yet have had to find the 70 box. <laughs> and it's eluded me. Oh, she's some in reason. here somewhere. But I got a 70 box that I, that I wanted to share. I see an interesting box right here. You're gonna... Let's see if we can get into that. I mean, there's a, there's Talk a, about going back. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Those are the structure spoons, right? The old haddock. These are yeah. the old, old haddock uh, spoons. Yeah, actually, uh, that's a flashback now because my first tournament, 1974, I believe we took third place. I fished in the back seat, spoon fishing, and... Uh, a name of Rich Tauber, if anybody remembers that name. He was just a young guy back then like me, and Rich Tauber actually won the tournament. And uh, I believe I took a, a third place, fishing in the back seat, just learning, thanks to uh, going back a few years and talking about uh, good sp uh, spoon fisherman, uh, Dick Gomer here, who, who taught me a lot. And I got on the on the spoon bite back then and learned how to fish spoons with fiberglass rods, deep water, shallow water, and uh, have a lot of memories with this. Good times. Awesome, brother. We're trying to get into this. this is where we're going to drop into that. Okay. Oh, so, man. Oh. Right. You think you know where that 70s box is? <laughs> <laughs> I found it. See? That's why I got to be organized. Didn't open up the right drawer, but I'm going to step back into early 70s my stepstone uh, just getting into it and learning uh, a lot of you won't be able to relate to this I've never even seen that kind of storage box <laughs> look at that yeah, oh, there's man. a there's a few newer bait couple new baits in there I guess I have I don't know what they're oh, doing man. oh they're retired they were some baits that I caught pretty good fish on. Yeah, but you can see by the age of the boxes, hard, hard plastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's get into that. Definitely. So, so paint a picture of bass fishing in L.A. in the 70s. Okay, give me, give me a rough... Polyester. <laughs> Satin jackets. <laughs> what was the nightlife like? Because I know you were about that back then. Yeah, that was a that was another whole world over there. That's a whole nother story, yeah. Good, good times. I'll say good times. Oh man. Definitely let's, good times. Let's shut this garage. Hear what we got going on now. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's the old school as it gets right there, right? That's a classic. And what is that? That's a jitterbug. Oh, youngster. Youngster knows what a jitterbug is. <laughs> That right there, to be honest with you, this was probably the ground blueprint to the wake baits. Okay. And, and little people would even have that connection to a, right. a wake bait. But truly, if you if you ever fished one of these and you throw a wake bait, you'll you'll know the, the, the coincidences and the things that the subtleties that this bait has. And to this day, this will catch fish. You know, it's an interesting fact is that is a bait that I have literally never caught a bass on. Oh, yeah. Pudding stone. I could tell you uh, No kidding. About okay, <laughs> lay it on me, man. Give me a pudding stone story with that thing. Pudding stone. Oh, uh, I have actually some other ones that I've thrown on pudding stone. And I shouldn't have told you, but <laughs> yeah. Cats Put, out the bag now. Pudding stone. Oh, yeah. They love it. They love the bait on pudding stone. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. What else I mean, we got in there, man? Oh, of course. 
What are those so, things? These are the Bagley's. I've seen those. <laughs> yeah, you won't I, find. I didn't even know what they were. You though. won't find them online either. Wow. And that that's from the seventies era. Oh yeah, this is seventies. Uh, definitely seventies. These baits are classics. True classics. Definitely. That's a great profile. Oh, great, great baits. I mean, obviously, they have a lot of sunfish. Definitely. Now, here's another sleeper. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what's funny is I tried throwing that bait as a youngster on Pudding Stone, and I never got a bite on it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to fish it. Oh, I've caught fish all the way up and down the coast on this. This size right here, the tiny. <clears throat> this bait right here. In fact, schooling fish, spotted bass will crush this. Anytime they're schooling, they love this. They love this here. It's been really, really good back in the day, and still will work. I don't. I only have a couple now, but truly, mm. it's done its damage back in the day. More Bagley's. I mean, truly, we're, look at the profile on this. That's pretty sweet. I mean, truly. You know, I've always been a big fan of baby bass patterns. I really have, and that it's cool to see that so prevalent in your tackle boxes even dating back then oh this is this is it this was the beginning with lead on the bill when do you ever see that oh, wow. lead weighted to bring the nose down okay and dive deeper huh without creating a bigger bill right okay. it gets you the depth you want to get countdown wow well, look at that micro <laughs> Uh, Christmas tree ornament. Still, it's a crappie, crappie slash, I guess, ultralight bass bait too. Yeah. I never threw it. It's just something that stumbled upon. I have. Okay. Now this. What is that? A rebel? We are. Oh, this man's done his homework. <laughs> I just been around the game a little bit. I'm impressed. All. I'm impressed. That's a rebel. We are, that I stopped and actually just put away. I've caught more fish, every species you can name in the world on that little micro bait and I literally retired it I mean I had so many there's has caught hundreds wow. of fish hundreds of fish on I that think bait I'm gonna have to leave a griffin behind for you you might love that thing and oh, oh boy. gosh this is wood all hand carved wood I believe so this is tell me tell me about the prop bait in the 70s man you know uh prop see props okay with the prop baits everything was introduced from back east predominantly Boys from the south, you know. Uh, I'll tell you what, Bassmasters is the ones that really, the magazine and Ray Scott and all that through the days coming up and through the advertisements and what we'd see and read. And eventually one day, you know, it finally came out here and we got, we got baits and had access to these baits before we didn't have them. And everything was all wood. Wood, mm -hmm. balsa, any okay. type of wood. Cedar. All, hand, all hand yes all hand done one of a kind uh true 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 uh these yeah, are it's the, cool to see but for the most part all these prop baits are top water baits right top water baits yes okay. top water baits exactly because there's been a little bit of a resurgence on that genre of bait but a lot of them now are designed to sink yes so you know i've you been got, fishing yes, one you got the suspending baits or they're fish uh, subsurface and that's a whole nother avenue uh, that's being done at different levels, different sizes. Uh -huh. And uh, actually it's caught on and it's catching on. That's so rad. But nothing new, just been revised. Right. You know? Updated. That's it. I want to take you into another box. Here. Wow. I'm gonna save this one for last. For next, okay, okay. This box here has old and semi, I'd say 80, 80 stuff in here. But this is very, very old. These are 70s. Rebels. These are the Rebels. It's like you and that hair back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, yeah. Still reveling. Still, still reveling on. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is this is what we had. 
Okay. This is what we had. So these were mainstays in your crankbait arsenal. These were the yeah. These were the days where actually second generation of cranks that I was introduced. Okay. We'll go in the first. We'll go in the first generation, but these were like second generations. As time got on, then they started mimicking any of the forage from crawdads, from the crawdad to the bluegill perch, and then bomber came in. The bombers came in to play. Mm. You know, we got bombers that came in. and That's they, an interesting color. This is a color guys wouldn't even want to throw. <clears throat> but there's a time and place for it, too. And the bombers on the Delta were Clear Lake, the Delta. Phenomenal. I took them, threw them down here, and did well. Nice. You, you know, because uh, most guys that I know that have a heavy background in Southern California are very strong at the soft game and finesse in the even the jig game right but when it comes to hard bait fishing i don't see a whole lot of dudes walking around with much confidence so it's fascinating to me to to see you dig into boxes and immediately you're you're looking at reaction baits which i love to do as well but you know it's because i grew up as that finesse worm guy right right you know um so i geek out on that and i'm actually i find it very fascinating that this is what you you choose to show us well, this is what I grew up on, and this is what I threw in the 70s, um, definitely. I mean, I was attracted to cast and wine, cast and wine, cover water, cover water. And it's crazy how I was doing that when I was young, very, very young, and a teenager, and how that evolved into my tournament fishing mm -hmm. 20, 30 years later. I mean, you were that athletic fisherman that, like, a Kevin Van Dam was kind of on the forefront of before Kevin Van Dam. I was just doing what I thought and what I read a little bit here and there from back east and, mm -hmm. and applied it out here and just experimented. And I never, honestly, I mean, I wasn't afraid to experiment and afraid to <laughs> That's just where it's chuck at. a wine. You weren't and, afraid, and man. And, I and, love and it. And not get caught up and not get caught up into the local doc talk and the local things that were happening and i just did my own thing and it was interesting to just capitalize and have fun doing something that you like to do and putting your signature on it somewhat that you know this is this is how what i do yeah and and how it evolved through the years and progressed into heavy braided line you know and power fishing and that was the whole next phase too going into the power fishing you know look at that I thing mean, i mean Look what I have here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I got a rattling spot here. I got diving, original diving rattle traps. Dude. I've never even seen an original diving rattle trap. These, no. are, these are original original diving rattle traps. This is the Cotton Cordell spot. Yep. Ivino, Ivino was throwing this, making, that was his bread and butter back in the day. Nobody knew what he was doing. Shout out to Don. Don was, Don was, Don made a, made a killing on this bait right here. Wow. <laughs> and he would take his try haul and beach it on the bank. Okay. Throw out in deep water and slow, and slow roll this bait uphill and win money. I mean, he would definitely, definitely cast some checks. And that's a lot of history right there. That's you know? cool, of, man. Of, of the evolution of the crankbaits uh, in Southern California that we just progressed through the years. And, I mean, they were ahead of themselves. I mean, the patterns haven't changed too much. Yeah. Well, you but know, the it's, colors. I can. I have a special connection to the rattle trap because that was really the first hard bait that I really devoted to spending time to learn how to fish. You know, a quarter ounce, a uh, quarter ounce mini trap, black chrome. Right. Right. And I, I, I figured out that I didn't have to wind it super fast like these guys were telling me that I could like sink it out in 20 feet of water and crawl it and lift and, and drop and right. stop and go and right and, and i just that was the beginning of the end for me because i just realized i can just continue to experiment and try fishing this bait whatever creative way i could think of and it's like oh crap i just caught a fish doing it Man, that's right sad. this is a cotton cordell hmm. uh bait and what bait is that i believe that's the the newer version of the big o the cotton cordell but I'm going to take off from that and we're going to switch over to this bait. And it's, I'm showing you what we did back in the day. What I did, especially for, this is going back 30 years ago, 
Because there were no Ito Vision 110s back then. and You know where I'm going with Oh, this. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, the thing is, is that to take the micro bait, match the hatch, suspend the bait. Nobody did. We were doing this back in the 80s. Little, most people didn't even know. Early 90s, we were just cashing in a handful of us that were doing this. And I made up my own, tri you know, my feathers back oh, then. Man. I was tying up my own feathers. That was the deal. You know? Um, and just wrap in lead and suspend the bait. Wow. And, you know, it was just killer. Uh, the shad wrap, going back again, the shad wrap, that was the bread and butter right there, you know? Yeah. And suspend these baits. You can get down six, seven feet and go, go down there with the normal rip bait. They were going down three, four feet. Mm -hmm. I was going down six, seven feet, sometimes eight feet with the number sevens and number nines. Yep. And getting in that zone that they've never seen that bait in never, before. Never, never had it in their face. That's it. Never had it in their face where they're just there. And on that pre-spawn bite, reaction bite, that's bread and butter. That was the deal back then. And it was about timing and knowing when to do it. And Dobbins was all over that. Mm. And he had his time and he had his moments to to, to capitalize on that. Um, so. You know, we all found our little niche and we all did our little things. And it's amazing how we thought what we had was a secret, but yet there was somebody else doing something comparable to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody's... That's still going on today. Every, yeah, everybody's kind of tweaking things in the garage and stuff. And gosh, we did that back 25, 30 years ago to get that little edge on baits and things. And we had no idea the industry was going to follow what we were doing to, my, to, to manage a bait. And make it more natural and uh, you know just appealing. And now, even what you're holding in your hand here, you know, I think people take for granted now because it comes straight out of a box in every tackle shop and every Bass Pro shops, you know, in the country. And to get that bait to do what you wanted it to do, to hit that zone, to swim the way you want it to swim, you know, to have that tail flare just right, like, man, like how much time did you spend here in the garage just tweaking on that you know in between my time because i'm a working guy you know i didn't have a lot of free time so you know i was limited you know very limited i i was you know working and working my butt off here once i bought the house it was i was focused more into my family home it took me away from the fishing end of it so it, i suffered tremendously but i was able to tinker around from time to time and then I was able to just put things together in a short period and compress things, but just really specifically fine tune, not a lot, but just the little things and, and, and capitalize on that and do and excel and do very well, well at those things. Where, um, you know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have the luxury uh, to really take it to another level. But I'm gonna take us back now, uh, going way, way back, Way, way We're back. We're talking 1970, 1971. Oh, snap. And, and into about 73. So this bait right here is a bait that 90% of you would not even know what that is. And obviously I changed. I changed. I changed. Yeah, well, you. you I didn't you, read it. I did it. <laughs> okay. Heading. Is it supersonic? Supersonic. Ah, see, I was close. This was, <laughs> uh, but like, you know, we'll do a segment with you like once every week, or every other week. And I just want to keep spacing it out and showing people all kinds of different things, you know. And Well, see, I already started with the vintage. Yep. So I'm going to go back to this in a minute. Cool. So now we're back with the vintage. We're in 70s. Yeah, so we got we got the head and supersonic here. Yeah, this bait I was throwing in 1971. Dude. 70, 71. And to be honest with you, I can't believe I still have one left. I caught so many fish. I retired it. I literally put it away. And, you know, it was just one of those things. I was like, who's just think I'd ever even have it to this day? <laughs> That's you know? cool. And they even made a smaller version of it, too. Oh, look at that. Look at that micro. That thing's like a little baby shark or something. Oh, it's I've just, never even seen that. Yeah, it's just crazy. But this this all caught fish. It didn't matter what. Yeah. You caught largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass. It caught it, it, white bass, you name it. Now... Here we go. Okay, Castake Lake, 1972, 
Do you know what that is? I want to say it's a big O. That's the big O. This is the production of the big O back in the day when they went into full production and they were introduced out here. The big O. They were gaudy, ugly yeah, look at looking. That color. <laughs> These are original, original hooks, hardware, everything that I actually retired these baits and a couple of my threw I had several but uh, these are the last of what I do have left and you know you can see some teeth marks on it a little bit too but it's just a gaudy bait mm. and then, but you know you get in those mud lines at Castaic you know <coughs> or spring rain and the water gets dirty Castaic in 72 it didn't matter ah it could be 30 foot viz and it didn't matter you could throw this in February and catch them you know <laughs> ridiculous it was off the hook it was just like we didn't know what we really had but guys chucking and whining this back in the day cast Lake lake is like today who would want to even think about throwing this on cast Lake lake or our local lakes and this stuff this colors work you know they caught bass ton and good bass too honestly i see something like that and i get excited well this is still around to this day yeah this is still evolved this is just still around oh, this yeah. color not so much this color though is mm -hmm. the deal that's the deal right there. It is. It's a time and place for that. So what else we got in this box? I mean, there's all kinds of weird stuff I've never seen. Well, just you know, more baits. Mm -hmm. That one's got some character. Well, <clears throat> these are all Big O family. When Big O actually evolved and started changing up, <clears throat> they made a smaller version. They made a deep a deep diving version. Oh wow! They changed up and went into patterns okay of sight of different types and it's just smaller versions that work very well nice you know i've always been <clears throat> partial to, to the chrome style finish that is a sleeper right there i don't care what um i think people get away from that now man everybody wants a super oh, you know realistic chrome. photo finish do that chrome chrome blue chrome black yeah is money mega best has one called ozark shad which is like chrome black with a little bit of scaling cash oh yeah Def, de de smoke it definitely and <clears throat> i even got a zero spook oh, in here can you that. believe that these are oh these are vintage too these oh, are yeah, just what the heck is that thing? these these are this is like very vintage what is it like a flat fish almost these are like very vintage type yeah this like what does that even do what is it it's a head and prowler yeah these baits were more zoned in on guys who fish in steelhead salmon. Okay. You know, but guys even bass fish with this stuff. Yeah. You know, some guys trolled, they trolled them. And leg, oh, okay. leg, leg core line. Uh. Leg core line trolling these back in the day. They were smoking them here on the local lakes. Wow. You know, these old timers were using this stuff. And me, I was thinking, wow, okay, I guess I have to have a couple. <laughs> so, I, you know, I put a couple, but I don't, I don't use leg core. So I never really got into throwing them. And, you know, this bait, everybody knows what this is, but I think it's been used a little bit. A little bit. And I retired it, you know. Okay. It's been cracking, taking on water. Mm. But that's a that's money right there. That's, that's awesome, man. Thanks for taking us down the 70s right there. That's the flashback right there. And uh, I want to go back to... Since we were on the subject of suspending baits and going back to the shad wraps and stuff like that, but this right here, I'm gonna go back on this here. This because honestly, that's that's a pretty big profile bait, you know. Um, SR9, I think, is what that is. Yeah, it, it 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 is it is. But given you're on the right body of water and you got a good hatch that year, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can't go wrong. It's a big fish catcher. This is truly big fish catcher, and this has been big money for me. Suspending, same okay. control. So they float change. out of the box, so you have to mod them. I weight them, hook weight them, change hooks out, hardware. Okay. And uh, suspend them with the lead wrap. And I'll tell you, it's a spool wrap, line lead wrap I wrap tightly. And I suspended them. But you have to tank test them, spool test them, and know where they need to be. Gotcha. And you got to fish and be lateral. Oh, you not head down, you not tail down. You want them to be lateral. That's the key is get the balance to be lateral. And pull forward and, and and dig. Lateral, pull and dig. Lateral, pull and dig. You don't want a bait that's sinking slowly. You don't want a bait that's just going to just dive, dive, dive. You need a bait to stay in the strike zone. 
and this bait right here is, is obviously a color and a pattern you're not going to see because there there's the factory and then that's my custom version of it mm. and that was that was money right there okay. but it's non weighted like I say it hasn't been mod this one hasn't modified the modified ones are in the boat and this is the last of the the true balsa baits wow. and then obviously you get into your deeper cranking baits too yeah, those are man this right? is the old 20 20 uh, 20 plus these were this was money too. Castaic Lake, right oh, there. That's that's, that's Castaic Lake right there. That was money. I learned how to crank on Castaic. <clears throat> you could do this in midsummer mm -hmm. and catch those suspended fish off the off the off the banks and get some good good fish off there. Definitely. That's awesome. So that's regarding as far as the hard baits, old school, into uh, early eighties.